Hi, I'm Nicholas Lodge, and I'm excited to share with you my new collection by Katie Sue Design. In this presentation, I will be showing you how to use the holly and mistletoe mold. This is the holly and mistletoe mold uh, from the Nicholas Lodge collection by Katie Sue Designs. And this is a really, uh, as I said, amazing mold in that we can use it in so many different ways and concepts. So first of all, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the actual mold here. So this is the uh, mold, which is the, uh, it's got the obviously berries and the mistletoe and the holly on. So here we have holly leaves. So there are two sizes of holly leaves, both a large leaf and a small leaf. And as I will show you, you can also basically just cut the leaves off if you wanted to make smaller leaves. You could actually do just like half of say the small one, or you could use two thirds of a large one to make an in-between size. So uh, they work very well for different size projects. Um, these can be used in a traditional way, or as I'm also going to show you in this video presentation, how to use um, wire in them as well. So you can make wired holly and wired mistletoe and also wired berries. There's also, uh, so those are the two holly. Uh, then we have the mistletoe. So obviously you have the right and the left hand side of the mistletoe. So again, a larger size and a smaller size. I'm going to show you those. Again, can be used in a flat technique or obviously wired as well. And then we have the berries, there's single berries, there's triple berries, both smaller and larger, and there's also a berry cluster. So these again can be used for, not only for mistletoe and holly berries, but also for autumn fall berries as well. You could do these in purple, in different colors. Um, and these are fun to use for, as I said, lots of different applications, again, either flat or wide, as I will be showing you. Going to start off with the holly. Now, I'm going to start off first of all with the large holly leaf. So this is the large holly leaf here. Now I'm going to make this as English holly. English holly is a darker green holly. Um, so I'm actually going to be talking about sort of two different varieties of holly, both English holly and then variegated holly. So I'm going to make the English holly in the large mold and the variegated holly in the small mold. But of course you could swap those over as well. Um, so when we make the English holly, we start off with a, a green, a green colored paste. Now, if you're going to use the mold just for cut out leaves, just pressing the mold into the, uh, pressing the paste into the mold, and then just do simple like leaves, where you may be gonna use those on a Yule log, a Bouche de Noel, you're gonna use them on a wreath, you're gonna use them on something where we're not gonna wire them. You can use just modified rolled fondant or sugar paste. Um, if you're going to wire them, you will need to use uh, flower paste, gum paste, petal paste, because obviously when we make flowers, we're generally using a slightly stronger paste because the fact we have them on a wire, we want them to dry strong. When we use the mold just as a flat leaf, um, here I'm going to use my um, digital scale. So I'm going to use here on the digital scale. So this is gonna be 1.5 grams of paste. So that means if you're gonna make um, obviously like four leaves, you would just uh, go ahead and do six grams of paste and cut it into four. Um, if you're using the size guide there, this would be a number seven size on the size guide. So again, you have about one third below the hole here and about two thirds above the top of the paste. This is uh, green paste here. I'm actually using here a uh, gum paste or a petal flower paste, uh, just because I'm gonna use this and show you then how to do a wired leaf, which is what you would use for that. But as I said, this could just be um, a sugar paste as well, modified. So we're gonna take a little uh, vegetable Shortening fat here just to modify the just to condition the paste. I'm gonna roll this into a little sausage. Now, when I normally make this for the mold, I start off with a carrot shape, and this is about one and a quarter inches long, about 3.2 um, millimeter, 32 millimeters, about 32 millimeters long. That's about the length of the mold. I just find that if you make it into a sort of a shape, this shape that works very, very well. I'm gonna then take my little cornstarch. Just gonna rub my paste onto my cornstarch pouch here. Gonna put this into the mold. Gonna initially just press that in with my fingers. And then I'm gonna take over with my cosmetic sponge. Just gonna push this. So what I want to do is I want to sort of keep the thickness in the center, but I want the edge of the mold to be a little bit thinner. So I'm just pressing around the edge with my cosmetic sponge here. Then I'm going to take my veining tool. Now this is a Dresden veining tool. So the, the wider end here, this is called the Dresden tool. 
and we use this for certain uh, techniques. Uh, this is called the veining tool, and the veining tool here is obviously what we're going to use here. This is the thinner end of the Dresden tool. So what I'm actually going to do here now is I'm just going to pull with the veining tool from the back. You see how I'm just pulling this into each of the points of the of the uh, holly. So this will actually just beautifully pull this in. So this is gonna leave like a little line on here, but of course this is on the back of the, so you're just gonna pull this in. So it's gonna come in with your, here with your um, veining tool. And then I'm also just gonna just pull that down into where the holly stem is. And then I will just finish that off one more time with my cosmetic sponge. This will just ensure that that presses that into the mold, okay? And uh, so you have your, and you're just gonna just simply flex your mold here, and that will come your beautiful leaf here, so this will give you your holly leaf, okay? Now these can be dried, uh, you could use a, for example, like a uh, crepe foam former, which is a sort of bubble foam. You could use a piece of aluminum foil, which you just scrunch up just to dry these in a natural shape. Um, or you could also use these flat, depending really on how you want to use them. Um, a lot of times when I do things like this on something like a wreath, I would actually make, say, 12 holly leaves. Then I would then dust them and I would actually assemble them onto the wreath while they're still sort of a little soft. So they then will form into the natural shape you want them to dry. But uh, that is how we would make the, just the, the basic holly. Now, if you wanted to take this to the next level, which is to make a wired holly leaf like this, all right, so this will be a wired version of the leaf. Um, what we're gonna do there is going to start off by taking a little bit less paste here. So I'm actually gonna use here a number seven smaller one gram. So if I was measuring this on the scale, this would just be one gram. And uh, so this is just gonna be one, one gram of paste there and a tiny bit less, there we go, so one gram. So that would be actually a number seven small. We're just using a little bit less paste because when we're typically making wide leaves, we don't want them to be quite as thick, okay? So I'm using just a little bit. So whereas we use one and a half grams for the, just the pressed in mold, we're using just one gram here. Again, I'm going to condition this paste with just a little bit of my vegetable um, shortening, my white vegetable fat here. I'm going to again make this into about a one and a quarter inch, about 32 millimeter long sausage, a carrot shape. So it may start off with a sausage and make it into a carrot. So this wants to be about, you know, about one and a quarter inches, about 32 millimeters in length. It's the basic length of the mold. Here I'm gonna take a 26 gauge wire. Um, now I'm using a green wire, but actually for this leaf, it doesn't matter whether you use green or white, okay? So I'm using a green wire here. And then I'm going to take a little egg white. Generally for flour making, I use egg white. So I will just dip my wire into my egg white pot, get rid of my excess egg. You could also brush this on to the leaf as well. And I'm going to then insert my wire into my carrot shape, into the fat end of my carrot. So pretty much it wants to go almost all the way to the top of the carrot. So the wire is actually about here uh, into the carrot. Then gonna use just a little bit of corn starch, corn flour around the bottom. So I'm just gonna secure that onto the wire. I'm gonna put just a little touch, and I'm just gonna flatten this. So I'm just gonna sort of squash my carrot a little bit like this. And then what I'm gonna do here is going to then just pinch the edges with my fingers. So I'm gonna create almost like a bit like a spearhead, all right? So I'm going to do a little bit of the work prior to going into the mold that I did in the mold with the cosmetic sponge. You see how you have the thicker paste here and then you obviously have this sort of thinner edge onto there. So we're going to put just a little touch of corn flour, corn starch onto that. I'm going to place this into the mold. All right, and then we're just going to now really pretty much continue. So you don't really want to try not to press too hard where the actual wire is because if you press too hard where the wire is, the wire is going to come out. So you see how I'm just pressing around and that's why I found that if you start off with a like a spearhead shape, it's going to make it a little bit easier to get that in. So you see how you're thinning this around the edge. Now remember, we have less paste here. We have half a gram less. So this is going to give you a sort of a thinner edge. And then again, you're just gonna just pull your, so with your veining tool here, just gonna just push that. If you need to paste to come a little bit further to the edge there, you can just pull that in with your, so you see how you're just gonna pull this in towards the edge of the leaf here. 
because when I make leaves, I want to, you know, if we were using a traditional flower making uh, technique, we would roll the paste out fairly thin um, and then we would cut out the holly leaf. But the whole idea with this design, uh, with this uh, mold concept, is it enables us to be able to, to uh, create like wired leaves uh, with the same mold you would make molded pieces. All right, so you see how you're just gonna just roll. So just press this on. So remember, just finish this off every time with your, this will just make sure you have a uniform thickness. And then we're just gonna just flex your mold here. And then your leaf will come out. So you see how you have your beautiful leaf, okay? But you see how it's a lot thinner on the edge. And then all I'm gonna do now is just gonna take my veining tool and I'm just gonna just hollow the end of the leaf. So I just wanna create like a slight hollow. You just do this for a wired leaf. And then the nice thing about there, because the wire goes pretty much all the way to the top, if you want to shape the leaf, you can actually just gently bend the wire. So you see how you can actually sort of bend the leaf so you create this almost like a taco shell. So you get this sort of V shape like a Mexican taco shell. And then you see how you're gonna get the nice shape to the leaf. All right, and so this would be your leaf and then you would just put your leaf into a little small styrofoam block like this to dry. All right, so this will then just uh, dry here. So remember this was made with, um, with gum paste or flower and petal paste because we want this to dry structure a little bit stronger. So if you're using, remember, just basic leaves, you can use modified rolled fondant or sugar paste. Um, if you're going to do wired, you generally want to use, obviously, gum paste or flower and petal paste. But that is how you would do the, um, the wired leaves. Now, when we go on to do the small leaves, uh, we're gonna use the smaller, so this is the smaller leaf. So this would be done in a similar way, but because this is smaller, when we make the, uh, when we make the uh, just the flat leaf, we're going to use here one gram of paste, which is a number seven small. So this would be, so this is actually the same size as we made the wide bigger leaf. So we're, because we're going down in scale. So we're going to again, just make this into, so this is a little bit shorter. Um, this is about 30 millimeters, about an inch long here. I'm gonna just put a little bit of here, little bit of uh, corn flour onto there. Just press this into your mold. Again, just gonna just press this in with your cosmetic sponge. So you see how this is gonna come down pretty much to the mold. And then with your veining tool, we're just gonna pull this into here, into the detail of the mold. So this is going to pull this into the, into the mold here. And then again, just finish this off with your, so really it's identical technique. It's just obviously uh, one is done with white. And this is going to be what we call variegated holly. So variegated holly, um, I normally start off with white paste and then we will just dust this variegation on. But of course, if you wanted to make this as an English holly, which is the darker one, you, you can totally do that. So it's gonna take this out of the mold here. And then when you take this out of the mold, now if you wanted to make the leaf smaller, you see here, like I've made just a little tiny leaf here. All right, so if you wanted to make a smaller leaf, you could actually take a pair of scissors and then with a pair of scissors, you could just cut that. Or when you're actually working the paste down in the mold, when you get down to sort of here, you just don't need to worry about doing anything on the bottom. Take it out of the mold and just cut that down. So you see here, this is just actually just like the top piece of the, um, of the mold, okay? And then um, again, this will give you the smaller, the smaller uh, leaf here, and then that can dry um, and you get this really, but they have this really nice, uh, nice shape on them. Now, when you do these, uh, this one wired, you're just gonna just use the same technique here, all right? But here we're going down to, uh, for the variegated um, leaves there. So we're actually gonna use a number six size piece of paste, which is 0 0.7 grams. Um, so just with some of the other uh, projects I've shown on these videos, if you don't have a high precision scale, which will scale one tenth of a gram, if you make, if you take two grams of paste, that would be actually, um, as I said, um, if you want 0.7 grams, if you took three leaves, that's 21 grams, because one gram is such a small amount of, uh, or one tenth of a gram is such a small amount. So if you just took two grams, rolled it into a log, cut it up into three pieces, that will give you enough for three leaves. So same concept. Now this is a game just rolled a little bit shorter. So this is again a little bit smaller, 26 gauge. Now here you have to use white wire, all right? Because obviously when you're doing a white petal or a white leaf, you always want to use a white wire. 
So again, we're going to just take the egg white here. We're going to just do this in exactly the same way. So you just would push this in to the leaf. And again, just going to mold this around the bottom here, like so. So just to show you this technique again. So just pop the wire back in. Because once you, once you press this, this will embed the wire. So you're just going to just press down gently with your wire. And then remember, you're going to pinch this like a almost like a spearhead. So you're going to just pinch this with your fingers like this and just put a little touch of cornstarch, corn flour onto there. And this is going to go into the smaller mold. So again, just like we did before, we're going to, going to just take your, just going to work this into the mold. All right. And then again, you just would go through the process of pulling this out. So when you take this out of the mold, you know, you take this out of the mold, this is going to give you your uh, wired leaf. So just exactly the same technique. Just wanted to show you that method of the spearhead again. Um, so that's how you make the, um, the holly, all right? Um, so obviously, if you're doing wired holly leaves, you really want those to dry totally because you'd need to make those in gum paste or flour and modeling paste, probably two or three hours. Um, if you're making the flat leaves like this, you can dust them while they're still soft or semi-soft or completely dry, it's up to you. So I'm going to um, now move on to show you how I do the coloring on those. For well, finishing off the holly, I'm going to use, first of all, a forest green. This is a slightly sort of bluey green, so we're going to use some of this color for the um, English holly, which is the green one. And uh, so what I'm going to do here is we're going to use this color, and I'm just going to just brush around the outside of the, of the leaf. So this is just going to give you a darker shade in onto the edge of the leaf. So you see how you have the natural green color in the middle and this slightly stronger color around the edge. So obviously if you were doing say 12 of these leaves for a wreath, you would do the green on all of them. And then I'm going to add a little accent. This is a ruby color, which is sort of a dark ruby red. So I'm going to just add a little bit of a ruby red here. And I'm just going to put a little accent of the ruby just down the center of the leaf about a third of the way down. So just going to put just a little bit of a touch of ruby just at the base here. Okay. So that's how you would do the coloring onto the, uh, to the English holly. So this is going to be, um, as I said, the English holly. And the wired holly would be done in exactly the same way. Um, once you've uh, got them dry, um, you would just dust them in the same way. The only difference is usually on the wired holly, you would often color both sides. Whereas if you're going to use this on a wreath or a bush de Noel, a yule log, you only need to do the top side. The other um, one I'm going to do is going to be, this is going to be the um, variegated holly. So I'm just going to pop that onto here. So that one is going to be done. So we're actually going to use a daffodil yellow. So this is going to be a yellow here. So I'm going to use a little bit of daffodil and I'm going to take some daffodil yellow. I'm going to put a little bit of daffodil just around the edge of this leaf. So I'm just going to just dust the daffodil around the edge. So this is going to give you this sort of uh, yellowy color that the variegated holly has. I like to use variegated foliage because a combination of the variegated and the English holly is a very nice one to use. And then we're going to take some apple green. All right, so apple green is going to be taken. So just a little bit of apple here. And you see how I'm generally working on a napkin or a piece of paper towel because you want to never take the color straight from the pot onto there. So you're just going to get rid of some of the color. So then I'm going to take some of my green here. I'm going to put this on. So it's going to come into the center. So you'll have this. So this is the apple green will go on the top. Now remember, different colors, you know, different manufacturers of dusting powders or petal dust, as we sometimes call them, um, have different names. But it's just sort of a bright, like, apple green color we're using here. Or you could use a lime green color. And then we're going to then use some of the forest green, which is the darker green I used on the um, English holly, I'm going to then just put a, um, some green down the center of that. So I'm just going to come down the center of that with, with a darker green. You're going to do this as sort of like a darker green stripe down the middle of the leaf here. This is going to just sort of just give you that nice shading. So you have the sort of the th different colors. Now, once the leaves have been um, dusted, 
um, just like with the other um, components that I've spoken about from on some of the other parts of the winter collection. Um, you can use two options. You could brush this with some uh, vegetable uh, shortening or some vegetable white vegetable fat. Okay, so you can just take a little bit of uh, vegetable fat on the back of your hand and that's going to warm it and then just keep a brush particularly for this purpose. Okay, and so then one, so you just would then just brush over the top of the leaf here like so. And what this is going to do, this is going to make the leaf shiny. And this is what the technique I would use if I was going to use this like on a cupcake, or on a bouche de Noël, a Yule log. I was going to use it on something that I'm going to sort of consume because it doesn't really have any taste. Um, second option would be to use like an edible spray lacquer. So again, there are many companies that do spray lacquer. So this is an edible spray lacquer and I showed this on the nuts and berries uh, video on uh, some of the um, things that I showed on there that are shiny. Uh, this does have a little bit of a taste to it, although it is an edible product, um, but I would use that generally on things like a wired, if I was going to do wired holly um, or wired mistletoe or wired uh, berries. But anyway, so, the, um, so that is how we would do the, the leaves. You can see this one here has already been brushed, so you'll have this nice shine um, here on that. Um, so here you can see the holly leaves. Then just bring it into camera. Um, you can see here, this is the actually like the wired um, holly. Uh, so here we have a spray of three uh, wired variegated holly leaves. Um, these are the small size ones, all right? And then here we, here we have a spray of three of the large size as English holly. Um, so this is being dusted in exactly the same way. Uh, this is being taped together, which I will talk about at the end of the video. And also this is, of course, has got the berries attached, which I'm going to be moving on to the berries a little later on in this video presentation to show you how to do the wired berries. But you can see it's basically the same leaf, it's just one is wired, one is unwired. Um, so that is how we do the holly leaves. So now moving on to the mistletoe, we have the right and left hand leaf, both large and small of the mistletoe. And uh, mistletoe can be made just like the holly, where we just press the paste in, and then we can also make this as a wired um, piece as well. Now, when we use this, both the sizes will be the same this time. So we're using, uh, for the mistletoe, we're using a half a gram of paste, which is a number six small on the size guide. So that means it actually would physically go through the number six hole or half a gram. Um, so again, if you're using a regular scale, just obviously use one gram, cut it in half for your two, two leaves. Now, um, you can you do mistletoe in sort of fun colors, like obviously like lime green is a fun color for Christmas time. Uh, if you do this with red, um, obviously the natural color of the mistletoe, if you're making wide leaves, normally I use a pale moss green color. But as I said, if you're just using this, for example, for a cupcake or uh, something like that, it's fun to do the mistletoe in a bright green as well. And this could just be uh, modified uh, sugar paste or rolled fondant, or can be um, obviously also flower and petal paste. It doesn't really matter for when you're just pressing them into the mold. Now, so you take your paste, uh, same as we use for the, when we did the um, uh, holly, we're going to just make this into a carrot shape. Just gonna roll it into a carrot shape, and then roll it into more of a baseball bat shape. So it's gonna just be rolled into this long, a little bit like when we make the dragonfly in the Katie Sue mold, you can start off with this almost like a baseball bat uh, shape here. Um, and uh, so this will give you the sort of the shape of this. And this again wants to be about uh, one and a quarter inches in length, about 32 millimeters, okay? So just gonna be, so really what you're doing is making this the length of the mold. Gonna put just a little bit of uh, cornstarch onto here. I'm gonna press this in the mold. And then what I do here is I just work from the Top of the mold, I just work down towards the bottom. You can see how this just very, very easily just stretches down to the base of the mold, all right? Um, so that would be your first half. Generally, I would just keep that in the mold and do your second half so you don't end up making, obviously, the mistake of making two left or two right-hand leaves if you're just making one of these. So just see this again, just gonna make it into, and again, you can just uh, roll this on your little baggie of uh, corn flour, corn starch, or obviously you can dust the mold into here. So just remember, just press this in uh, to the mold. You just see then that gives you the right sort of shape we need when we're doing this. And then we're gonna just sort of, you see how I'm just working this down. So this is very, very easy to do. So this comes down from the top of the mold to the bottom. 
I'm then going to just remove my leaves from the mold. Now this can also be used in autumn time in fall. We have sycamore, um, so you can use this for like the propellers of a sycamore. Um, so this is useful for other um, autumn things as well. Now what I like to do at this point, as soon as I take it out of the mold, I just integrate these together. Um, so mistletoe, you actually can have mistletoe leaves can come like this way, a little bit like a wishbone, or can go out like that. So there are different varieties. So you can either have the leaves coming out or coming in. Um, and as I said, so they just, so you just position either obviously so they come in like this, like this set here, or come out like that. And then what I do is I just gently roll those while they're soft, and you see then that will give you the, the set of leaves. So that just integrates them together. So a little bit later on when we make the berry, you see you could just pop a berry on the top of that, and you have a beautiful decoration to use on your cupcake um, or other um, applications, all right? Um, so anyway, so you can do either, either way is actually correct there on the um, mistletoe. So that would be how you do them. And then when you do the, the small mistletoe leaf, the small mistletoe leaf is done in exactly the same way. Uh, the only difference is this would be a number five size on the size guide. So actually 1.3 of a gram. So again, if you take one gram of paste and roll it into a log and cut it into three, so it's one third of a gram uh, for the small, um, small little leaves. Just remember this technique of using grams or the size guide is just the way I try to standardize it. So you'll sort of know how much paste you need to uh, color if you're coloring the color from white, but also it means that you have an idea about how much you start off with. Um, in making sugar flowers, this is just a sort of technique that I use in all of my books, my craftsy classes, and uh, as I said, in instruction, just to tell my students exactly how much I'm using. Um, so anyway, so that will be your, your mistletoe uh, done in a sort of just in the mold. Now when we're molding the mistletoe in the, with wires, I'm going to do this very similar to what I showed in the last segment. And here I'm going to take some more of a natural mistletoe color, which is going to be a pale moss green. And again, we're going to use a half of a gram here, which is a number um, six small size piece of paste. All right. And so again, you're just going to just take your paste here, just going to condition this. Now this is a flower paste, flower modeling paste or a gum paste because we're making this wired. So remember, whenever you're doing wired components, uh, like on the nuts and berries, doing things like the blackberries and the acorns. Um, I prefer to use, um, obviously, a, a, a firmer paste. So here you're going to make this just like we did when we did the holly. Now the difference between this and the holly is that we're going to put the wire into the thin end of the carrot or baseball bat rather than the thick end that we did on the holly. So I'm going to just put a little bit of egg white on the end of my wire. I'm going to insert that into your piece of paste. So you see it's just going to go into here and we're just going to just stretch this down now. All right, again, we're going to make this approximately about um, one and a quarter inches, about 32 millimeters in length. You can see here, so about, as I said, just over an inch or about just over 33 centimeters, about 32 millimeters in length. And in here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to bend the wire. So you see how I'm actually curving the wire over the curve of my finger. This would be like when we make things like honeysuckle buds, how we make the bud of a honeysuckle. I was going to put just a, just rub a little bit of uh, corn starch, corn flour onto there. And then we're going to take the mold and you see here, you're just going to place this into the mold like this. And just like we did before, we're now going to just work down from the top down to the bottom here like that. But you see how easy this is. This is a little bit easier than the holly, but you want to curve the wire because the natural leaf will curve a little bit like this. And then once you've uh, finished that, you release this. So you're going to get the nice veining onto the leaf. And then we're going to just hollow the base of this leaf. So I'm going to use my veining tool here like I did on the holly. I'm just going to make just like a little tiny hollow and just pinch that slightly at the bottom. So you're going to get this little bit of a hollow just here at the base of the mistletoe leaves. Now these leaves were dry. Uh, once those have dried, so I have here a pair of dry leaves. So what I'm going to now do is going to take a pair of tweezers. With a pair of tweezers, using some fine tweezers, I would just bend one to the right and one to the left, okay? Now remember, they can go out like almost like bunny rabbit's ears, or they can actually incurve into each other a bit like a wishbone. Um, so we're going to take the now some green floral tape. So I'm using some light green floral tape half width. 
I'm going to just put my leaves together like that. And then I'm going to start with my floral tape. I'm going to start about an inch, about two and a half centimeters down. I'm going to go around a couple of times with my floral tape. And then all I'm going to do here now is I'm going to just slide. You see how I'm going to slide the floral tape like a piece of tube up to the bottom of the leaves. All right, so these are going to form. And then we're going to just tape down with your floral tape here to the bottom of the stem. But it's best to let these dry before you do this. All right, so you're just going to position your leaves as you want them to go. Small ones will be done the same. Now then we're going to take the actually the small size berry mold. So you can see here we've got um, on the berries which we'll be moving into the next segment to talk about. But this is the single berry. There's a big, large and a small single berry. What we're actually going to do here, we're going to take a number two on the size guide. Right, so this is a number two on the size guide, which actually is one tenth of a gram, 0.1 gram. Okay, so this is one tenth of a gram. So if you made one gram of paste, you could cut it into a little log and cut it into 10 pieces. It's just a little tiny piece of paste. Uh, this is not so important, you know, even if you just put the paste in the mold and trimmed off the excess. But what we're going to do here is you're going to just push this into the, into the berry. So what we're actually doing is we're using that as a portion piece. So if you didn't have, as I said, an accurate scale, just push some paste into there. And then once it's in the mold, if you have excess, just trim it off with a pair of scissors. All right, and so we're going to use, that is the size piece of paste we're going to use for the center of the mistletoe. So you're going to take this out, and then all we're going to do here now, we're going to roll this into a little sausage. All right, so this is going to be, this little sausage is going to be um, just about a quarter of an inch long. All right, so about six, seven millimeters in length. And then we're going to take a little bit of egg white, and with a little bit of egg white, I'm going to put a little bit of egg white in the center of the leaves. And then this is actually going, you can just open up the leaves a little bit, and you're going to take this little sausage of paste and you're going to put that over the, so the sausage you can see is actually rests over the top of the, of the center there, like this. And what you do is you just pull this down, all right, so the sausage is actually going to form. Because what this is, this is like the node where the new uh, foliage comes from. And then we're going to just then pinch this. So I'm going to use now my tweezers. So here with my tweezers, I'm just going to just sort of make it just a pinch that sort of in the middle. I'm just going to go over the top of this. All right, just going to pinch down the middle and down the middle. So you're making almost just like a raised, just like a raised line over the top of that. So you just pinch one side, you pinch the other side, and you pinch the center of that with your uh, tweezers. And so that gives you this very realistic um, end to your leaves because the mistletoe leaves have this little sort of new growth uh, part in them there. All right, and then um, so we've obviously this is uh, these leaves are already dry. Uh, you just leave that a few minutes for that to dry, and then we'll move on to the coloring. For coloring the mistletoe, I'm going to use a apple green color. So this is an apple green. You could also use a limey green, just sort of something fairly bright. And uh, I'm just going to brush this over the leaves and also the central part. I've also done this on the back of the leaf as well. So I've done this on the back, so all over uh, the leaves. And then with the um, just the simple ones here, you could either leave them as is, or if you wanted just to enhance them with a little bit of shade in, you could go in just with a little bit of shade in like this. You see this would just be a contrast to the sort of the bright green. Um, so you can see the two, you know, the two different, um, you know, sort of variations. So, you know, of course, this invests a little bit more time. So it depends a little bit on how many of these you are making. Once we've got these uh, colored, uh, just like with some of the other um, leaves that I have been using, depending on how these are going to be used. So if I was going to use this onto a wreath, onto a bush de Noël, a cupcake, something where somebody's going to consume this. Normally I would just take, again, just like I've explained on the previous clip on the holly, just a little bit of vegetable shortening or fed white vegetable fat on my hand, and I would just then just brush over the leaf just to give a little bit of uh, natural sheen to the leaves here. And I said these ones would be obviously without the color on. So that would be how you do this leaf. And then if you are doing wired leaves, because generally um, wired leaves, uh, these aren't going to be uh, consumed because they have wires in them. So normally I would use a uh, spray lacquer. So I'm going to just use the spray lacquer here. Do this on a protected surface. I'm just going just to spray this onto the, 
onto the leaf here, and this will evaporate, and as I said, will give your leaf a natural shine. It looks really shiny at the moment. Once that evaporates, uh, that will leave a nice natural uh, look to the leaf. And um, so that is how you would uh, uh, do, do the leaves. And you can see here in the um, finished, uh, obviously, uh, mistletoe there, you can see the finished leaves here have got the sort of natural shine on them uh, with the berries, which is going to be in the next segment. So that's how we would make the mistletoe. So we're now going to move on to the berries. Uh, in the previous segment, I showed how to use the small single berry for the in center of the mistletoe leaves. So this is a single small berry, single large berry. This is the small triple cluster, large triple cluster, and then we have the large uh, group in here. This is the cluster of berries. Now, these can be made in different colors. With the, within the mistletoe and holly that I'm showing you in this presentation, I'm using white for the mistletoe berries. I'm using red for the uh, English holly, which is the darker green holly. And then I'm going to use an orange and red mixture. So this is about equal amounts of orange and red. So you get this brighter orangey color. But this berry mold could also be used for other berries like purple berries. You could do green berries. So you could add use these as an accent with roses on a wedding cake, for example, in springtime in a lavender color. So it's a very versatile mold. When we use the single mold, uh, which I did for the um, for the mistletoe leaves, that was a number two or 0 0.1 gram. For the large, we're going to be using a number three, uh, which is 0 0.2 of a gram. So this is my number three size. So I'm just going to roll this into a ball. I'm just going to put a little bit of my cornstarch onto there. I'm just going to press this into the mold. So you can see this is going to then just fill the mold up level. I'm going to pop that out of the mold here, and that will give you a little single, um, little single berry. All right, so that could be used for, um, as I said, a little single berry, which is cute for just a little holly berry, and have a nice shape. Now, when we do the cluster, the small cluster, which I have here, uh, that one is actually made, the small cluster there, that is made number five, or 0 0.3 grams, and then the large triple is going to be number six small, or 0 0.5 grams. So this is going to be a number six that would go through the uh, number six hole. And uh, so here you're going to take your paste. Again, okay, just going to condition this. So remember, when we're working especially with a gum paste or a flour and modeling paste, you want to just condition the paste with a little bit of uh, vegetable shortening or white vegetable fat. Just going to roll that. So this gives the paste more malleability. Going to roll that in my little, and then just going to open up the mold like this. Going to push the paste in, and I'm just going to push my paste into the three parts, and just going to finish that off with my cosmetic sponge here, like so. I'm just going to flex the mold. This will come out of the mold here. So this will come out to give you a little triple cluster. And then uh, finally, the, the actual berry cluster, which is the large one, that is also going to be the same amount. That's a six small or half of a gram. So this will be the, the berry cluster here. Again, just going to put a little bit of corn flour, corn starch into that. And then this one, all I do is just work that into the mold. So you see how I'm just working it into the mold like this. So this will just fill up the mold level. And this is going to make a berry cluster. And so this is nice to use, like if you're doing a grouping of holly, like on a bush de Noel on the Yule log. And again, just going to flex your mold here, and the little berry cluster will come out. So it's really fun. Now, when we do the berries, I'm going to use a black uh, pen. This is a food art pen. Um, so I'm using the wider end. This particular uh, rainbow dust one has obviously a thin end and a regular end. And so when you're doing the larger berries, you can just take this. And you're going to just use this to make a little dot on the end of your berries like this. When you do the small berries, you can actually use the other end of the pen. This is like on the berry cluster. And you can just do like little tiny dots here um, like this. You could also do this if you didn't have a food art pen. You could also take some black gel color and just use the point of a toothpick and with a point of a toothpick. And on the green, um, the green on the mistletoe, so some mistletoe has more of a green color, some has a brown color, so you could do either. Um, I've used a green pen or a brown pen just to do a little dot of brown. Again, you could use a toothpick or even a fine paintbrush as well. So that is how we use the 
um, to create the berry cluster. But you can see they're really sort of fun uh, grouping of uh, berries just made by pressing the paste into the mold. In creating wired holly berries and mistletoe berries, we will use uh, the same molds, uh, but we're going to take wires. So for the holly, um, both holly, um, the orange berries and the red berries, I will take three uh, 26 gauge wires. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, take my, so I'm going to measure about three eighths of an inch, which is about 10 millimeters down. So about 10 millimeters down the wire. Now for the um, English holly, I would use um, dark green floral tape because generally I would tape that all together with dark green tape. When making the uh, variegated holly, I would use light green tape, but the technique is exactly the same. So what I would do is about approximately about 10 millimeters down here, and don't worry too much about this because we're going to trim this. You're just going to just tape down the three wires. And you'll see the reason why we have the three wires in a second. So we take down to the bottom of the wire. Okay, so now we're just going to open this up with your fingers. You can also use a pair of pliers here as well. Okay, we're just going to open this up not quite at a right angle, so just at a slight angle here, um, like so, okay? As you can see, just coming into the camera here, there we go. All right, it's so just at a slight angle. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim these pieces to about um, five millimeters, about a, a quarter of an inch. So these are gonna be trimmed. So I'm gonna use some wire cutters here, and I'm just gonna cut these to about a quarter of an inch or about five millimeters in length. So this is going to be to be small enough to fit into the mold. So you can see here uh, on the mold, okay, so you can see how this is going to sort of sit. Because what this is going to do, this is actually going to go into each of the berries, okay? So if any of your wires are a little bit long, this one wire here is just a little tiny bit longer than the others, just trim that as needed. So just make sure that when you, before you actually sort of proceed with the next step, you can see how this is going to just sort of sit into the, into the, um, like this. All right, but as I said, the only difference between the two berries would be you would use either light green tape or you would use dark green tape. When we do the berries, we're going to use a number six on the size guide or 0 0.7 grams um, of paste. And uh, so this is what we're going to be using for the large berry here. And uh, so this is going to overfill the mold. We're going to get an effect a little bit like a muffin um, in the mold because we want enough to have enough for to accommodate the wire. So again, we're just going to condition the paste a little bit. We're going to put just a little corn starch corn flour onto your mold. You're going to press this into the mold here. You see how I'm just going to work this into the mold like so. And then I'm going to take my veining tool and with my veining tool, I'm just going to push into where the three berries, where the segmentation of the three berries are. So you see how, but you can see from the side here, you have an effect a little bit like a cupcake or a muffin, okay? So now we're gonna take a little bit of egg white. I'm just gonna just brush a little bit of egg white onto my three wires. One, two, three. And then what I'm gonna do here is gonna just gonna press this into the, press this into the berries while they're in the mold, like this. And I was going to just press this around with my fingers. And just remember, just before we take this out of the mold, just make sure that they come together like this. But you see how this is going to be sort of dimensional. So what this will actually do will create a little bit more of a three-dimensional berry. And then when you flex the mold, this comes out of the mold, you see this is going to give you your, then your triple berry cluster, okay? And uh, this is the way that you are going to uh, make the berries. So then we're going to take your food art pen, and then with your food art pen, just like we did on the other ones, we're going to, to do this. Now, if you wanted to make, for example, like a, a larger, you could also take a single berry, and then you could put a little bit of egg white, and then you could actually add another berry onto the top there like that, if you wanted to make a sort of a, like three and one on top, so you could actually build onto the triple one as well. Um, so depending on what you're going to, uh, how you're going to use the berries. But uh, that's how we would do the, um, the berries. So for the holly, I've used the large berries and I've made like two in the red for the spray and then I made two in the orange. So remember, you can see the difference between the color. So this is the, just the red color here. 
and then the other one is done with the uh, with the orange. So this is just a, like an orange with a little bit of red in it. So you just get a contrast between the two varieties of holly. So that will go into your styrofoam block to dry. Now when we do the mistletoe, you're going to do exactly the same. Uh, the difference is here we're going to use the uh, white wire. All right. So on the mistletoe here, uh, we're going to use white wire. So we're going to do the same concept. So you're just going to take three 26 gauge white wires, you're going to tape down with light green floral tape. And then here what we're going to do is going to cut those down. Um, so those need to be cut down a little bit shorter. So these are actually about an eighth of an inch, all right, which is about approximately about four millimeters long. So again, this will sit into the into the mold here. So it will sit into the mold like like this. So again, this will be a little bit smaller. And then when we do the, this is a number five size or 0 0.3 of a gram. So again, the same concept, just a little bit of um, cornstarch goes onto there. Now when you're working with white and red, you know, just wash your hands between because obviously when you pick up the white, it's going to get a little bit pink otherwise. So it's going to just pop that into your mold. Again, so you'll create that sort of cupcake effect. And then you're going to just going to create the three parts of the mold. Going to take a little bit of egg white, going to put that onto the three little spokes. And then this is going to go into the mold like that. So we're using white wires on here so they're not as, as visible. Again, okay, you're just going to pinch this around and then just going to just come in with your tool here. And again, we're just going to flex the going to bring this around here like that. Okay, so this is going to give you your berry cluster. And then just when you take it out of the mold, if you can see any of the sort of the undercut there, just going to press that in with your veining tool like so. And then we can take a um, green food art pen or a brown food art pen, and you can just do like a little green dot or a little brown dot onto your uh, berries. With a toothpick, you can do this, or you can also use a paintbrush. You just use a fine paintbrush uh, to create that. In finishing off the berries, just like on the leaves of the holly and the mistletoe, we can either take just a little bit of uh, vegetable shortening, a white vegetable fat on the back of your hand. And so typically when I'm doing this on the berries like here, on the triple berries, if I was going to do these unwired, I would just use a little bit of that to make them shiny. Okay, so that's how we make them shiny. Um, when you're doing the actual holly berries, obviously holly berries are quite shiny. So you can take for wired ones, I'm using some confectioner's glaze. So this is a food grade shellac. And uh, we spoke about using this in the um, video segment for the pine cone. And so what we're going to do here is using some confectioner's glaze. You're just going to just brush this over the berries and this can be brushed over the berries to make them shiny. Now if you're using the lacquer spray, which I referenced as well for the foliage, uh, what you can do is just give it two sprays of lacquer spray. Do a spray and then leave it to dry for a few minutes and then do another spray because holly berries obviously are quite shiny, uh, more shiny than the leaves. Okay, So we're going to do like a, just a glaze, uh, the, put the glaze onto there. And then on the mistletoe, again, would be the same. So you just would brush this onto the mistletoe leaves, uh, berries like this. And these will go with the leaves. Okay, so that is how we would do the uh, glazing of the berries. Whether you use the vegetable shortening, the white vegetable fat, or whether you use the confectioner's glaze, or two sprays of spray lacquer, we've got you covered for making beautiful berries. So when attaching the, uh, using the holly and the mistletoe and berries uh, independently, you know, as flat pieces, you can of course obviously put the holly berry on, the holly leaf on and then the holly berries. A lot of times if I was going to use these as a decoration on a cupcake or a Bush de Noël, a Yule log, I would actually assemble these in little sprays. So to do that, you can use a little royal icing, you could use a little piping gel. So you can take just a little bit of piping gel, that's also because it's neutral. You could just put a little bit of piping gel, for example, onto the leaf here, and you could just put your berry um, cluster onto there. Just press that down gently. And then you can also use um, some super bond, which is a thick glue. So we could use a little bit of super bond. You can also put the glue or the piping gel onto the back of the berry as well. 
So here you can see I have the uh, mistletoe um, berries, and they will be, as it's a royal icing, piping gel or super bond is what I'd recommend to stick those. Here you can see the uh, this mistletoe berry I've done with a brown um, dot. I just actually just took a toothpick, a little bit of brown, uh, light brown gel color, and just made or use a paintbrush as an alternative to the food art pen. So that shows how to uh, do the little sprays. And here you can see I've got two variegated um, holly leaves overlapped, and then I've got the berry cluster. So this would be really nice to use like on a cupcake. But you could of course do lots of various variations on those. Now as far as the wired um, components, um, if you were going to put your spray together, so here I've got the holly um, leaves. So usually what I would do is I've obviously have taped the, the leaves here with some uh, dark green floral tape. So just like I showed when I made the uh, wiring of the berries, you're just gonna take the tape and then just slide that up to the bottom. And uh, so what you would then do is with your um, pliers, you just can just sort of take your leaf and just bend that a little bit at an angle. And then you can take your floral tape and just gonna start taping. Gonna just start taping down just a little bit. Then I'm gonna bring in my my other leaf, and then I will bring in my berry cluster. Now, generally the berry cluster, you're just gonna take with your pair of pliers, you're just gonna bend that at an angle, and see that's gonna give a more staple, because this is obviously three 26 gauge wires, so you don't need to worry about adding wires to your leaves, because when you put the berry clusters in there, they're gonna give that sort of uh, more of a substantial uh, group into your, to your holly. And then you could just come down with your floral tape, and with your floral tape, then you would, uh, just break off and of course then you could add a third leaf in here and another set of berries whatever you decide you uh, would like and the mistletoe would be done in the same sort of way I have here the uh, mistletoe leaves and the small berries you can see here in the finished um, example of the uh, sprays uh, here on the mistletoe I've got small berry cluster large berry cluster I have a small leaf cluster two large leaf clusters and in here I've got sort of two sets of berries and three leaves. So depending on how you're going to use that in a spray would depend on what combination of, um, of leaves and berries you use and uh, how you put them together. So here you can see the finished um, holly and mistletoe with their wired and unwired varieties. So I hope you will have fun working with this mold and using these in different configurations on your cakes, cupcakes and confections. So until next time, sweet wishes. A little bonus that you can make with the holly leaf, either the larger or the smaller, you just follow the directions like I showed for making the uh, larger or smaller holly leaf. I've got here some cream colored paste, is to make an oak leaf. And so this actually makes a very nice oak leaf. And uh, the reason why I start off with a cream color, this gives you a very neutral base to then dust on top and it's not as stark as white. So all you do is you would just follow the directions as I showed you for the holly leaf. When you press it in, the only difference is here, we're not gonna go in with your veining tool and pull this into the vein. You're just pushing it sort of close to the edge. When we flex this out of the mold, you see how you're gonna get more of a dull looking holly. This actually is a little bit like American holly, it has got like not such defined points as the English holly. So then you're going to need to use a foam flower pad I'm just gonna turn this upside down. So we're actually gonna work on the back here and using my Dresden tool, what we're gonna do is you're gonna then just actually just pull this out where each of these, and this will create the little scallops for the edge of the, the edge of the um, acorn leaves. So this actually was, uh, this concept was uh, thought out by Noreen, who's one of our Katie Sue design members. And uh, it's a really fun way to take the holly and change this into obviously an oak leaf. So the reason why we do this on the back is you'll still then have the sort of the veining and things on the front. Now, when I showed on the um, nuts and berries um, video, I showed the um, oak leaves. You can take like, for example, like a number three piping tip and you can actually make some like little cuts out here so this will actually look like little bug bites. So it looks like a little caterpillar or a bug has eaten this. And then you take your veining tool and we're going to then just hollow the base of this. And you see how then you can just bend that to, to shape. So that's gonna give you your shape of your oak leaf. And then all you're gonna do is then once that is dry, 
I just dusted this with some yellow, with some orange, with some red, with some brown. And then I've lightly steamed this to set the color. And then um, what I've done is just uh, when you steam it, it's going to give you that natural leaf. We don't want to make this too shiny because obviously in the autumn or fall, the leaves when they're this color are more of a dry look. And that's a really cute way to use the holly leaf uh, to make an oak leaf as a little bonus. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and we'll have lots of fun with your new molds. So until next time, thanks for watching. Sweet wishes. This has been Nicholas Lodge.